and welcome to the Roundtable and today's discussion on arts education in the arts community of Sarasota County. And I'm your host, Leanne McIntyre. Joining me every episode will be Superintendent Lori White. Welcome. Thank you. Our board representative today is Caroline Zucker. Caroline. Thank you. And our special guest today is Jim Shirley. Welcome, Jim. Well, thank you. I'm glad to be here. Great. Um, Jim is the Executive Director of the Arts and Cultural Alliance of Sarasota. So before we get started, why don't you tell our audience a little bit about yourself and explain what the Alliance is. Well, I will, and thank you for having me, Leanne. Um, I have been involved with the Arts and Cultural Alliance now for about five years. And uh, this is a very important organization for Sarasota. I mean, we all know that we have a very vibrant and large arts and cultural community here. Uh, as a matter of fact, for a community this size, disproportionately large. And one of the important things that we need here is an umbrella organization that kind of can be the face and voice of the arts in a lot of different places. You know, we have a lot of our organizations that are running operas and theaters, uh, and it's very important that those folks be able to focus their time on that. And the purpose of the Alliance is to be a way that every citizen can get involved in the arts. And as a matter of fact, that's one of our charges, is to make sure that we're looking at activities throughout the county that can provide opportunities for people of all walks of life to be involved in the arts at the level that they would like to be. So we represent individual artists, for example. We have places where they can exhibit. Hmm. We make sure that there are places that people have that, that opportunity to show the work they do. And we represent the performing arts and arts education, which is a huge part of our mission. Because what we really do is advocacy. Mm -hmm. uh, we're a membership organization. And it's really important that people throughout the county join the Arts and Cultural Alliance and help us develop the policies and the things that we want to communicate to our legislators and others because in many ways we are the voice of the arts to these people. That's a part of our role. So we are, we are out there every day trying to be involved in the community. Uh, we work with the performing arts organizations and the museums and we also work with the school systems and the hospitals mm -hmm. to make sure that arts are present and available when they should be. Um, and we do have a wide variety of art outlets in this community that we can all take advantage of. Uh, what are some of those, and uh, if you have a story or two of how they relate to this, the, the school district, what they well, might have to offer? You know, actually there are, of course there are many. We're, we're one of the communities that's fortunate to, to have our own opera, our own symphony, uh, several major theaters, both professional and community theaters. Uh, and all of these communicate or all these uh, organizations have a major commitment uh, of, of the mission of their organization to support the school system through education, uh, things that they can do as outreach. For example, it might be a field trip to the Van Wezel Performing Arts Hall or uh, children in the fourth grade attending an orchestra performance so they can have that experience. But it's also people in the community who are teaching artists. Uh, professional artists or people who have been doing this for a long time that can have a special skill and they can come in and help use dance to teach mathematics. Uh, so there are um, any number of opportunities within this community, uh, both from a formal organizational point of view and an individual artist point of view, all of whom are dedicated to supporting education as a part of their mission. And that's great. That leads into a discussion of uh, how arts fit into education, and education is data-driven. So what kind of data supports arts education and these many opportunities that our arts community uh, offers our students? Well, there are multiple studies that really verify the high correlation between experiences in the arts and how our students perform. For example, many studies that have been able to show Students that are taking art classes perform higher on SATs. The more art classes they take, the higher those scores seem to go. So that's a clear um, connection. But even within each of those artistic disciplines, we see some critical links. For example, um, in the study of music, um, we see high correlations to mathematics. Mm -hmm. Um, we also see a relationship to what we call spatial temporal reasoning, which is very important in understanding the relationship of ideas and objects to space and time. That's a mathematics skill. In the area of drama, for example, students that can reenact things through dramatic expression have higher levels of comprehension character development. Their writing shows improvements. Mm -hmm. um, in the visual arts, we see also increases in inference skills. Um, reasoning skills, visualization, mm -hmm. all of those that contribute to multiple disciplines. 
But I think when you look at critical thinking, creative thought, that also really expands multiple disciplines, analysis, th synthesis, evaluation, all our skills that are developed through the arts. Mm -hmm. And finally, when we look at students that are experiencing the arts, are able to find methods of self-expression, creative thinking, innovation, those kind of intangibles may not be measured by a standardized test, but certainly impact education. Certainly, Absolutely. and then it also additionally um, is another reason many students use to stay in school. That not everyone is capable of playing football or basketball or baseball, so it's another alternative for them. And it's offering so much and working on so many aptitudes that I think our um, employment community is saying they're looking for employees, which is another topic for another uh, edition, but it really all ties everything together. I have a great, I've had the opportunity to have a great experience that would complement both of what Jim and uh, Lori has stated, mm -hmm. and that was last Friday I was asked to be a chaperone on a, on a field trip to Ringling School of Art, uh, no, to Ringling Museum by, with Booker Middle School. And uh, the art teacher was the one that instituted this through a grant through Gulfgate Gives mm -hmm. and two other foundations supporting that uh, uh, grant. And what the teacher did was to bring them into the new modern art design. There was four rooms available there. And the children went and uh, she discussed the four areas. And then they were told to sit down and choose a photograph that they wanted to study and write about. So not only did they draw the photograph, and Ms. Georgia O'Keefe was one of them, and Wyatt was another one. And they sat there and they drew the, the design, but they also wrote about what they saw in that picture. And, to, and then they had to report out. And to hear the high level of thinking coming from those students was amazing about the black flower with the yellow dot, and the dot represented the sunshine within the darkness of the world. I mean, to have an eighth grader be able to articulate what they were seeing and feeling in there, and one girl was brought to uh, tears over one of Georgia O'Keeffe's drawings. I mean, it was just phenomenal to see that. And we have that great opportunity here in Sarasota for our students to be exposed to this type of art. Mm -hmm. We also have a way of helping our teachers understand all the opportunities that are out there through EdExplore SRQ that's been supported through the Patterson Foundation and the Community Foundation. Our teachers can feel confident that those types of experience have high correlations to the standards they're required to teach. It's an easy way for the arts organization to align to the curriculum mm -hmm. of the school district, but also for teachers to see all the possibilities. In addition, there's grant opportunities available to help subsidize that expense of mm -hmm. transportation or the expense of bringing an artist into the classroom. But I think we're trying to make it easier easier for both our educators and our organizations to make that wonderful connection. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring up an interesting point, Lori, because when we started out on that journey with Ed Explorer, Ed Patterson allowed it through the funding of getting this done, but it was a partnership between the, uh, the school system and the Arts and Cultural Alliance and the Science and Environmental Council to say, how can we get more teachers involved by making them aware? I mean, we, there were always a lot of experiences happening, you mm -hmm. know, through the organizations and the and the uh, artists that were involved. But a lot of teachers didn't know it was there, didn't know how to access it because it had been uh, more, more of a one-on-one -on -one relationship. But when we developed that technology to, tool through the school system's uh, tech force, uh, all of a sudden, all the teacher has to do is go to Ed Explore and say, I want to find an experience about uh, how I can use uh, drama to teach reading or whatever that may be. Right. And fortunately, we know the resources are there, but the, the, to me, the even more exciting consequences that came out of all of that was that all of a sudden, the interest in the community said, well, we know we have to be able to fund these things. And uh, through work with the Community Foundation of Sarasota County and the Education Foundation, uh, there's money there now that teachers can access to go have those experiences, whether it's coming into the classroom or going out into the, into the, like the Ringling or wherever mm -hmm. it may be. And, uh, but the whole community joined in making that happen. And uh, also there, there's a, a now a, has been established an endowment with support from the Patterson where if we can generate about $3 million in donations to help support this fund, 
it will perpetually be there to provide support mm -hmm. for these activities. So I think what's happened, Sarasota County has said, we're, we're committed to this and we want to we want to find a way to make these experiences available to children and it's important for us to do that. I think it's one of the best things that I came agree. out of all of that. Oh, that's wonderful. This, and this community continues to support art, edu art education because that's part of what the referendum dollars goes for and that is the continuation of art and music in our schools. Right. And without that funding stream, we would be hard pressed to continue the programs that, that we have. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have violin strings being played in an elementary school. Uh, it, um, Goshio performed Annie last year. What I would hope that we could do was to educate our community as to the various opportunities they have of coming into the schools and seeing the plays that are put on by high schools and middle schoolers, seeing some of the performances, some of the dance performances, that's the challenge I mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. for us to be able to show our community what's available to them mm -hmm. that's performed by our, our local students. Our students, right, mm -hmm. and there, because there is the conversation of it's wonderful the arts community is joining with education and the foundations and the people who donate to the foundations, but to the community as a whole or to the children's parents, what kind of benefit does that provide? Why, why would we continue to provide arts education in public education? I think there's also demonstrated that when students have this total experience, when education is defined not by, by just the four R's or how they do on the FCAT test, but really all the skills that they acquire, we know when those students walk across the stage and the parents need to be assured, they're prepared for post-secondary experiences and they're prepared for the workforce as well. They have some of those important skills that our employers are looking for. Mm -hmm. And perhaps they actually have developed a very specific skill that could prove a career for them in the arts. So there's so many options that have so many benefits for our students. I think our families expect that the quality of the education includes those very critical experiences in the arts. That is part of a whole educational system. Mm -hmm. You're very true. I'll tell you, one of the things that we do as a part of the Alliance is to interface heavily with organizations like the Economic Development Corporation. Uh, where uh, I spend a lot of time with businesses uh, through the EDC talking to them about what's important. Well, you know, number one, if a company is considering bringing their company here, one of the first two questions they're going to ask is, what's the education system like? And that's going to be the determining, probably the biggest determining factor, can their employees' children get the kind of education they want? The other thing that we hear, though, is from uh, talking to employers and if you look at the studies that have been done in recent years, uh, over 70% of executives in American companies say that the number one skill set that they're looking for going forward into the 21st century workforce is creativity. Uh, not w whether they are, happen to be an engineer or a technical person or whatever, you know, the arts add to that creativity factor. And, you know, not that you can play a cello, but Correct. that you have a different way, way of, of looking, looking at the mm -hmm. situation. It's that whole think outside the box. Mm -hmm. Uh, mentality, right. which creativity allows you mm -hmm. that, that gateway out. Absolutely. And you know, if you look at so often, uh, students that are strong mathematics students or strong technology students also have an art component. They play an instrument. They want to act in a drama club. They, you know, they love improv. Mm -hmm. It's something that helps them release that inner self <laughs> that I think you were talking about, Caroline, where they say it's okay to look at this a different way. And I mm -hmm. think that's really what arts education brings as much as anything. Mm -hmm. But to your point, um, uh, Lori, you know, uh, we did a, a study with Americans for the Arts uh, two years ago, and we looked at the, uh, the impact of the arts in Sarasota County specifically and, uh, and how it affects the county. And what we found is that our nonprofit arts and cultural organizations in Sarasota County account for over 5,000 jobs in Sarasota County. That makes them, if you took them as a whole, mm -hmm. they're we're probably one of the largest employers, including the school system mm -hmm. and the government in the county. So, you know, there are jobs out there and they're not all being an actor right. or being a violinist. You know, there are lighting jobs and there are set jobs, there are engineering jobs that go there. So. Um, you know, there are a lot of starving artists, but as Dr. Thompson says, <laughs> we're, we're here to dispel thinking. the concept. <laughs> That's right. That's because starving. if you look at going forward, you know, whether it's Google and technology and all of those things, it's about creativity. Mm -hmm. It's about being able to think 
in a different way, and I think that's what the arts bring to us as much as anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I also think it's so important for our students to have that language that speaks across the continents. Um, civilization is defined by their artistic expression, and it's important, even perhaps now more than ever, that we have that way of communicating across our differences, mm -hmm. because it is that common language. Yeah. Yes. See, and I think that um, curriculum can be taught through the arts. I've watched this language of the uh, art teacher at Booker Middle School. That's, my grandson's there, so that's what I'm familiar mm -hmm. with. But in her delivery of curriculum of drawing a flower, she also has them doing pro, uh, language arts because they have to describe in detail what they see and what they feel. Mm -hmm. And I've never saw such in-depth writing from, as from these students. When I listen to them, when they present, it's just amazing. You can't get that unless you have a curriculum that's rich in the arts. You can't have that. It's, the arts builds synapses in your brain, which just expands your brain to grow larger. I, I don't know the technical <laughs> way to talk about it, which allows you to do all this critical thinking that's so necessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it forms partnerships with your peers, working with your peers. It's, it's totally, you form partnerships in sports but then you get away from sports, and where is that leadership and where is that partnership and the working together? Mm -hmm. It's in the arts and it's in science, and that's part of what we teach in school as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And also being in public education and being in the schools, it, it, it allows students who might not be able to uh, have those opportunities to have those opportunities, yeah. to find that either that budding, budding Mozart or not, but they, they would never know if we didn't offer it in some way in uh, our public schools. A third of the students that went to Ringling last Friday had never been there before. Mm -hmm. So can you imagine the impact, not only on the student, but on the family that was as a result of a grant, I mean, just a, and a mm -hmm. teacher who cares enough to go the extra mile to apply for the grant and then put together this whole program because it involved bringing lunch. I mean, that's amazing to me. Mm -hmm. And that's what our teachers do. And Jim, then wrapping it up with the community aspect, it, you know, arts need to survive because they need also not just the artists, but an audience. Yes. And so we're also <laughs> helping students appreciate what the arts are, opera, right. ballet, sure. paintings, sculpture. Uh, and then they take that home to their parents who may have not had that in school either. Mm -hmm. right. And I think it's a whole synergistic relationship mm -hmm. that we're building in Sarasota County because we see what an important aspect it is to um, human development. Absolutely. Well, and I, can, I can tell you clearly that among all of our arts and cultural organizations that help make this possible, uh, they're facing the issue of how do we make it, how do we make our art relevant to younger audiences so that we can continue to build what we build. Because the facts are that you can't put on a symphony or an orchestra just by selling tickets. There has to be investment in the arts. But if you've never been involved, mm -hmm. then you don't have that opportunity. And I think the, one of the big opportunities for us here is that uh, among our uh, least uh, wealthy families, among you know the, the free and reduced lunch children, can go and have an experience at the opera, at the museum, at the orchestra. And I've heard you say a few times about something that was important to you, Lori. Sometimes these can be a life-changing experience. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I saw the article in the paper the other day about the young man who's teaching physical education right. through dance. Right, dance, the hip hop. You know, yep. uh, and here, here's a young man that came from a probably a challenged background, mm -hmm. but it's touched his life. It's impacted his work and what he's doing but look at the impact it's going to have on those children mm -hmm. down the road. It, it is just, it's a, it's a community that has such an opportunity. And the great thing is, is that whether you're on the organizational side of the community, whether you're a teacher in education, we're all committed to making it happen here. Uh, and I can say clearly that one of probably the strongest commitment that the Arts and Cultural Alliance has is to continue to support our education system because it's just too important not to. We're building the leaders of tomorrow. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that's more important, you know, and when it comes time for the referendum, I think that's what Sarasota County has said time and time again. We are willing to invest, not so much in our school system, but in the future of our community, in the future of our country. And we are willing to put our money behind that importance because if you don't, you won't get it. It's just that simple. 
And I think that's one of the amazing things about this community that we've done and have consistently said we're willing to invest in our future and the future of our children. And I think it's up to the school board to make sure that the arts continue in our schools, that we have dance and that we have music and that we have drama. It's up to the school board to make sure that there's equal funding in there as there is for other programs, that that has not been reduced. And to date, that's what we've been able to do. With the guidance of the superintendent, we've been able to make sure that our arts are maintained in Sarasota County Schools. And so that does bring us to probably the final point we can talk about, which is the funding of arts or funding in public education in general and the challenges in the last few years and the referendums. Lori, can you speak a little to that? Well, certainly I think it's all about priorities. Um, we have to continue to focus on that child and how can we provide the best educational experience. It does take community support. If we rely just on the revenue stream from the state, it's not sufficient to do what we feel is so critical. It takes these partnerships with our foundations and our arts organization, but it helps, it really takes an entire community making that investment in the future because that will make a difference in the quality of our life here in Sarasota County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Caroline, any last thoughts? Well, I, I have to go back and I'll relate to my grandchildren because mm -hmm. they are immersed. One plays the violin, the uh, piano, the flute, and he just took up the saxophone. The other <laughs> one has built a circus arena in the backyard, and they have hoops out there because they belong to Sailor Circus. And they perform every day after school in their own backyard, and then go to Sailor Circus and perform there. They put on skits and plays, and they have their friends over to join with them. And they have costumes that they've designed, and they've sewn because they now have learn how to sew. <laughs> and this is all because of their love of the arts. I mean, I mean, it's it's just mind-boggling to me. Mm -hmm. They are so fortunate that we live here and that they are able to be exposed to all these various art forms here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I think as you, if you look at building community, uh, I'll give you an example. Several years ago, many years ago, when Barbara and I decided to move here, we could have gone anywhere in the country we wanted to. It was not an accident that we came here because you have one of the most beautiful communities in the world, bar none. Uh, you have an education system that is among the top, if not the top, in the state of Florida uh, that can provide the support for a family. And then you have that community that can not only support education, but look at the joy of living here and being in this beautiful place and having these wonderful organizations that provide this type of experience. And it's why Sarasota is what it is. It's one of the finest communities in the world and it comes about because of all of these things coming together. So I think it's really critical that the arts and the education system and the organizations that produce that art and the people who surround us all because it's here continue to support it. And I think the referendum is one of the important steps in that and we need to get out and get active in making sure that's passed because that's how we are ensuring the future of those children, thus our future as well. We have just a little bit more time, so I wanted to go back, uh, Caroline, because you do talk a lot about going to the different performances, and you brought up the challenge of getting the community in mm -hmm. to see performances, and I think that is something that uh, we need to, we could look into, uh, especially in terms of support then of the referendum and funding and keeping arts in our schools. Do you have any suggestions for that? We, we try at the board table level to talk about what performance we've seen and what's coming up the following week, but that's only twice a month and that's limited. But um, I think the education channel is also a partner with us and will be able to help us better identify the performances that are coming up. And I also think that we can send messages home via our telephone system to the schools or the parents of the various schools that are putting on these performances. If we can get our community accustomed to looking to see what's on, because it's on every website. Like um, Riverview High School has some fantastic performances four times a year. Their concerts are great. Booker, Booker High and Booker Middle School put on fantastic performances. It's getting the word out to them. And I, I'm at a loss to be able to do, <laughs> I tell you how to do it. Well, we hopefully need another, this show will definitely do we it. We have yes. a limited staff, and I fully mm -hmm. recognize that because 
we've managed to keep our budget so low, we've cut so, over so many years, so many millions of dollars that you all are working with, the skeleton staff here, so it's, it's hard for you to do much more than you are. But I, we need our community to know that this is occurring because they will benefit from it, from our it students well. will benefit from, uh, from it, because when you perform to a large audience, you feel the energy in the mm -hmm. audience uh, while you're performing. Mm -hmm. you, that applause, I mean, you, you live for that applause. So how can we get our, our community to know this and recognize it? Good. I think if you go to one of these shows <laughs> or these uh, performances, it will touch your heart. Mm -hmm. I think the quality is amazing, but there's something about that young person who is really exposing themselves to the world and, and showing, demonstrating their talents that can't help but touch your heart. Right. And mm -hmm. I think it's that link that our community feels not just globally about children, but to those individual students demonstrating all that they have learned mm -hmm. is a well, very exciting. It may be you're looking at a, a play or a performance of music, but what you're really looking at is a child building their own self-esteem, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. their own self-confidence. And I can tell you personally from a guy from the business world, if you have those qualities, you can conquer the rest. And I think for a child to stand up and whether they're swinging on a, a, you know, a rope at Sailor Circus or playing a musical instrument, uh, whatever it may be, uh, as you say, Lori, when they're up there on that stage, it's, it's building a lot more mm -hmm. than just the art. And mm -hmm. I think that's the important thing we need to realize. It's their self-confidence and their ability to be able to step forward their leadership ability, it's all being built through oh, the arts. Right. 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 All right, everyone, thank you so much well, for this you. wonderful discussion and conversation and joining us today. Thank you, viewers at home, and we'll see you next time on The Roundtable.